Okay, guys, we got a uh, number of requests to do some explanation on my Dykem experiments. I'm going to brief this now. This is completely my opinion. I do not have any dyno program, anything, no do dyno proof, no nothing. But I have talked to a couple of extremely smart individuals, and... Uh, I might be able to leak a little bit of what they said. Much more knowledgeable than I am. <clears throat> I did save uh, one bone stock intake port, exhaust port, and chamber so I could do an IOP comparison on uh, the W2769 heads. So this is the only one that's not cut. So it is a little bit rusty because it was poured. I've got all the specs, so I am ready to do an IOP video on it. But it's kind of funny when I I did it all and I put it onto the screen, I said, man, I did not do a great job on the intake port. But I think I know where it's failing. It's failing on the stock valve job after I've done the chamber. In any case, I'm not going to touch until I talk to Rob about it, but I was thinking maybe I'll, uh, I'll talk to Rob, change the valve job, and then, uh, then do the IOP comparison. But as of right now, we're just going to talk about this, uh, this dykem. Now, whenever I do the dykem, I try, try to spray the, the same amount of dykem every time. Is it possible to do it exactly? I don't think so. You know, it's it's coming out of an aerosol can. Okay, can you see? Let me set up the light. The only thing that really shows is a little bit here and a touch here, and there's actually some splatter on the exhaust valve. Okay, so let's pop the valves out and see what we got. Okay, on the valve without a back cut, you can see uh, the lion's share is on that right-hand side, by, by far. Okay, in the port itself, it's really quite, quite a thin stream. It just gets a touch over from the, uh, the stem. It hardly has any angle on it at all. All right. Let's take a look through down its throat. Blow it up so you guys can see it better. It's basically, I mean, from, from my point of view, it hardly has any angle on it at all. It looks, and it's got the slightest little tilt towards the left. Now, let's see if I can do this with... Uh, Sorry, need, need too many hands. Our flow, in reality, should be aimed like this, okay? Because it wants to empty towards the center of the cylinder, okay? So that's good to keep in mind. As you can see right now, we are uh, maybe that much of an angle, a few degrees. That's it. That's all we have, okay? And then the liquid is basically coming straight out and hitting this little piece of the chamber, and that's it. I don't see anything around the plug. I don't see anything. Very little on this side, just a shadow. Okay, now, when I did the ports, I did pay attention to the liquid flow. And what I was trying to do is... I want to get more liquid on this side, and I want to get more liquid on this side, if possible. Because the more you spread it out, I figure, the finer the droplets would be, right? If it's the same volume of fuel that you're putting in, what would you rather have? One thick stream, where all the fuel is, or widespread out? I would think widespread out. Now, 
You know what? Let's take a look at our bore and see how it looked in our bore. Okay. Got a little whack here. And the tiniest little shadow over here. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you exactly what the fourth cut looks like. You'd have to go back to the fourth cut video to see that. But it was completely different than this. It was much more spread out all over the bore. Okay, this one has had uh, a rough life since it was sprayed. As you can see, it has some scratches in it from me measuring uh, the bowl. Uh, but you get a, a good idea of, of the Dicom experiment that was, uh, was used. Okay, if you can see, I've got blue all the way over to here, all the way around, and it starts to splatter by the plug. And it goes to, I have splatter, splatter, splatter. I have splatter, I have splatter to about here. Okay? Now, that is on purpose. If you take a look at this big smudge here, okay, it's much wider than the smudge I have here. It's also going in a different a different location. You know. It does have angular movement towards the center, which it should. Right? But if we take a look more in the bowl, this is much wider, right? To our division. And then after our division Look at how much wider we are. We'll go back to the other head. Okay? There's a huge difference there. I think it would be a horsepower difference. And I certainly think it would be an efficiency difference. Remember, if the fuel is not prepped well, or it's prepped well and by the time it gets into the cylinder, it's large droplets, it is not gonna con it's not going to burn well. Okay, it's going to burn slow, if it burns at all. So all we wind up doing is getting a lot of hard hydrocarbons out the exhaust, which isn't good for anybody, and costs us a lot of money and we don't make power. Now let me fiddle with the light and look down its throat. Okay, this is rusty because it was poured not too long ago. Now I'm pretty sure that you guys will be able to see We've got a lot more of an angle on this, okay? Is it a huge difference? Well, I'm going to say that's about, that's about what it looks like to me. Something like that, okay? It's certainly a step in the right direction. Now, how much can be done? Well... If I really wanted to put more of an angle on it, I probably could, but I think it's I think it's pretty good where it stands right now, so that's why I left it. Besides, when I change the valve job, it may change that pattern quite a bit. So it's not worth going off the deep end like I like to do. Okay? Now, the little fin behind the guide, I would think, does make a bit of a difference, you know. Stocker has a big boss, but it is angled. I mean, you can see they put a little point there saying, hey, this is probably the shape it should be. And then they mill it flat to, uh, to drill it. It also shows the swirl. Now, how does it show the swirl? Well, Remember, this was this was shot with Dicom at 600 lift. Okay. Now, when I put it on the bench, it was 265 or something like that as far as flow. Uh, I didn't I didn't have the swirl meter hooked up, but I remember the the swirl curve on the very first one was completely dead. It was like zero at 600. 
And if you look at that, how it pours straight out, that kind of makes some sense. Okay. Now, I don't remember exactly what the swirl was on this one, but I'm going to say it was probably more like 750 or 1,000, something like that. In any case, we've got quite a bit more swirl at a lift we're actually going to be using, which I think would uh, aid in burn time. It would reduce our burn time. Okay, so then we can build our pressure earlier. We need less timing lead, less advance. The more efficient you make the chamber and the fuel prep, the less timing it should need. Okay? Is that a, a blanket statement? Kind of, but I'm sure there are exceptions to it. Okay? Let me think of what else I need to add to this. Okay, what would it look like if I could get it perfect? Well, I don't know if you can get it perfect with the dicum that I use. Now, Chad Spire does, he makes a mix of, uh, I think it's alcohol and some red dye or something like that. But it's much thinner, and it probably represents fuel a lot better than the dicum does. And he likes to get a pattern from one side all the way around, really. It likes to cover the whole chamber. And I would say that he's right on the money, just like he always is. He's Chad's very good. Uh, and uh, the only thing that worries me is spraying alcohol into eight open fan motors is a little terrifying for me. I'm, I'd rather not blow my bench up. Uh, I, I can't afford to get a new one. So it's an, it's an interesting... I mean, one of the questions was, you know, is the Dicom the same density or something as fuel. It's not even close. It's much thicker. Okay? And, uh, but you have to remember, it's coming out of the can as an aerosol, right? It's, it's sprayed into a relatively fine mist, but as it's going through the port, it's collecting into larger droplets, which is similar or different than fuel after it leaves our mixer, whether it's a carburetor or a fuel injector. Okay, it does the same thing. So I think it's a valid test. I think it's valid to to spread our, our mark out. The more the better, I think. It's good to see some angular uh, movement towards the center of the chamber. That's the efficient way it wants to dump anyway. It's shrouded on this side, right? How can you get... Where are you going to get more air out of? The shrouded side or the wide open side? So if you can have it coming out like this, if you go back to my fuel uh, modifications, I take a big piece out of the chamber. A big piece out of the chamber here, which really helps my high lift flow. I can get fuelies up to 275 CFM. And that's not a huge port. Those heads make really good power. You know, and it's a relatively, it's not, it's not a monster. These, uh, the stocker, I think, was 190 cc. And my ported ones are 197. So I added 9 cc's. And, uh. Well, we'll go over the flows and stuff you know, at a later date. But in any case, I mean, at 600, uh, we got a, a, a noticeable improvement in, uh, in how much flow we were getting out. Okay, so we're flowing more. We're getting more of a spread out pattern. I would think at this point, you know, this wide spray on the chamber is showing that the the fuel will be spread around some more. Okay? Like Chad does, it gets, it gets the color everywhere. I think he's right on the money. I think that's what we're going to need. That's what you need to try to do to make power. He actually showed that on his super stock heads. They make some ridiculous amount of power. 
uh, I'm going to say 670 horsepower from like a 358 or something. And it's a tiny, it's a tiny oval port. These are a good size oval port. These will do just fine. Especially on a Stroker Chrysler. Alright guys, hopefully this answered a couple questions or just me rambling on a Thursday when I'm burnt already. Don't, I don't even want to talk about it. But you guys should understand. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the comments, guys. I got no problem at, you know, trying to answer them. Remember, this is only my opinion. And uh, I hope it's helpful. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night.